turtle, big turtle, little turtle. Yeah. 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 It is ugly. station where people lived and worked was concerned, well, that was just science fiction. You know, even though we've been training and preparing for this day for the last 25 years, there's still a part of me that finds it hard to believe I'm fortunate enough to be part of the team that's actually putting the International Space Station into orbit. Dreams can come true. Sprawling over an area the size of two football fields, the International Space Station is so large, you'll be able to see it from the ground as it passes overhead. The International Space Station represents the combined efforts of over a dozen nations from around the world. 
dedicated to one common goal, improving life on Earth. With seven laboratory modules where research can be conducted in near zero gravity, the space station will allow researchers to study materials that could not exist and processes that could not take place here on Earth. Researchers are especially excited about the ability to grow ultra-pure protein crystals, critical to medical research. You see, without the effects of gravity, scientists get a truer picture of the cell's structure, and with this understanding, it may be possible to move more quickly to cures for diseases like cancer and AIDS. We're ready to uh, start on a new era in international cooperation in space and get this space station built. We have main engine start. Four, three, two, one. We have booster ignition and liftoff of the space shuttle Endeavour with the first American element of the International Space Station uniting our efforts in space to achieve our common goals. As a member of the team that joined together the first two pieces of the International Space Station, I got to participate in the initial assembly of the largest, most complex structure we've ever placed into low Earth orbit. Assembling the space station will require over 38 space flights on three different types of launch vehicles from the United States and Russia over a five-year period, delivering modules, truss segments, resupply vessels, solar arrays, thermal radiators, and all the multitude of other supplies and equipment that are needed to make the space station habitable. Once in orbit, structures weighing thousands of pounds can be maneuvered into place by spacewalking astronauts without the negative effects of gravity. We'll also be responsible for routing electrical and fluid lines and mounting numerous fittings. The way I look at it, we're going to be some of the most glorified construction workers ever to hold a ranch. But I'm ready for it. I've been ready for it ever since I was a kid who dreamed of flying and watched in wonder as our astronauts explored space. So, as you tour the exhibits today and look out over the high bay at pieces of the space station being made ready for an incredible voyage, remind yourself that an international space station was a dream that seemed impossible just 25 years ago. Today, we're exploring the next generation of spacecraft, seeking to improve life on this planet for our children and our children's children. When you consider all that we've accomplished in just the last few decades alone, it's easy to believe in a future of infinite possibility. And it all started right here with the first piece of the International Space Station, a journey bounded only by the limits of our imagination and the willingness of the next generation of Americans to soar higher and higher in their quest for knowledge, their love of adventure, and their desire to go beyond their dreams. Dreams really do come true. Hmm? It says no step here. No steps in. They fed me very well. Maybe we need to go back. You're fine if you want to slide over just a little bit. I do.
liberates the astronauts from these tasks, leaving them free to concentrate on research. recover and reuse the booster casings. They're good for up to 20 missions each. But the external tanks, they burn up in the atmosphere. After the orbiter separates from the tank, they burn up in the atmosphere. We need a brand new external tank for every single mission. And the trademark orange color that you see on the external tanks, that is an unpainted foam insulation spread over the skin. That's where it gets that trademark color from. One of the reasons they spray that foam insulation on there is to turn the external tank into sort of a big thermos. You see, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen are classified as cryogenic propellants. Gases that turn into liquids at very low temperatures, very cold stuff. The liquid hydrogen, second coldest liquid on Earth, minus 423 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay? So that foam insulation will insulate the tank. It'll help keep the propellants from boiling off into an unusable vapor. Okay? Now the problem that we had, we've got four sensors. Four, they're called engine cutoff sensors in the external tank. They're supposed to detect when the tank is getting low on propellants to shut the space shuttle main engines down. Well, two out of the four engine cutoff sensors failed this morning, and they can't launch with that. They can't launch with that. So that's the problem they had out there, the engine cutoff sensors in the external tank. And right now, they are taking a look at the problem. They think maybe it's a circuit. We don't know anything specific yet, nothing really etched in stone. They think maybe it's a problem with the circuit. That's what they're looking at right now. They're hoping to be able to turn around and try again tomorrow. But we'll just have to wait until we find out a little bit more. Okay. Here's some more pictures of the astronauts here at the Kennedy Space Center. Now, the astronauts actually spend most of their time at the Johnson Space Center in Texas. I'm sure most of you have heard of Johnson.